video, you will learn the concept of databases. We'll go over the typical CRUD operations, relational and non-relational databases, and database management systems. We will also see the concept of data storage and data management, what is the difference between them, and why and when do we need to use databases. So, what is a database? A database is a collection of data that is organized so that it can be easily accessed, managed, and updated. Usually, you will need to store data that will be accessible even after you end the program execution. One way to do that is by using a text file. But this is not scalable and doesn't provide a good structure. This is where databases kick in. Modern databases are managed by a database management system, DBMS, which makes it much easier for developers to store, retrieve, and manage data. DBMS systems are also called database servers because they manage data and serve developers through an API using the client-server model of communication. In comparison with the text file option, database systems provide structure for the stored data. This makes the database flexible and optimized for data management, storage, and retrieval. The data is stored in tables or collections, which hold entities, represented as table rows or documents. Entities can have relationships between them. For example, one purchase order could hold many products ordered in certain quantities. For a better performance, data tables may be indexed, which means internally ordered and optimized for faster search by key. Databases implement the classical CRUD operations. CRUD is an abbreviation. Each letter stands for a single operation. Those are the basic operations you will be performing on a database. C stands for create or add new data. R stands for read or query data, U stands for update existing data, and D stands for delete existing data. Databases also give you the possibility to execute more complex data retrieval operations with data queries. Those can be for searching, filtering, sorting, grouping, aggregating, and many more. Database queries are executed using a specialized query language such as SQL or a specialized data access API. Databases hold and manage data in backend systems. Almost all modern software systems use a database in some form. The data in database systems is organized in a table holding rows or collections holding objects, key value pairs, or other structures. The software, which manages, retrieves, and manipulates data in the database, is called DBMS, Database Management System. Examples of DBMS systems are MySQL, MongoDB, Redis, Azure, and thousands more. DBMS systems are responsible for data definition, data retrieval, data manipulation, and data administration. Data definition means creating and deleting databases, creating and modifying collections, tables, or other sets of data records or documents, and defining their structure, fields, and data format. Data retrieval means retrieving data, querying, searching data, filtering data, extracting data, combining it, and even aggregating data. Data manipulation means inserting new data, modifying and deleting existing data, and so on. Data administration means managing user roles and access controls, concurrency, monitoring, replication, backup and recovery, and others. Modern software systems use a DBMS system to manage data instead of implementing the data management internally. There are two types of databases, relational and non-relational. Relational databases organize data in tables and data roles. For example, an e-commerce software could have a table holding products, each table row could hold a product ID, a product name, description, and price. Some tables in the database, in the RDBMS system, maintain relationships between them. For example, one supplier could have many related products, and each product has a supplier. This is called a one-to-many relationship. In relational databases, the SQL language is used to query and modify data. SQL, 
short for Structured Query Language, is a standard database query and manipulation language. It supports simple and more complex commands such as select name, comma, price from products. The software packages which manage relational databases are called RDBMS, Relational Database Management Systems. Examples of such systems are MySQL, PostgreSQL, MS SQL Server, Oracle Database, and many others. NoSQL databases, or non-relational databases, hold collections of documents or key value pairs. Document databases like MongoDB manage collections of documents such as products or vendors, where each document has a set of properties like name, price, and description. Document databases support retrieving and querying document collections and creating, modifying, and deleting documents. Key value pair databases such as Amazon DynamoDB store keys mapped to values. These key value pair structures are also known as dictionaries. They support fast search by key operation, but storing collections of data is less flexible. Key value data storage systems are good for organizing simple data. For example, a phone book can be stored in a key value store. Database systems are an important component of most modern software systems, and therefore, software engineers must have at least basic database skills. Let's look into a real-life example of the need of data storage. Suppose we want to build an e-commerce system. The data about each purchase order is printed on a receipt. Imagine you have thousands of sales per day. You cannot keep all receipts physically. That would take too much space. Moreover, managing that data will be hard to search and treat, for example. You cannot keep the orders and receipts in a text file or multiple text files because it will be too complicated to implement the CRUD operations and it will work slowly. You need a better structure and system to manage this data. This is where you can use a database. There are many more reasons to use a database, except for physical storage. In fact, data storage is not the primary reason to use a database system. As we mentioned earlier, imagine having thousands of receipts. It would be quite impractical to search these receipts unless they are carefully structured and ordered. This is easily solved by a database as it is stored on your computer or even in a cloud service. Tables and collections can be indexed and this allows searching millions of documents in milliseconds. While you have to cross the information on the paper and write over it, or even print a new receipt for the same order if something has been changed, with databases you can easily just update the entire entity when you need to set a new value. This is much like setting a new value to a variable. You've done this many times so far. Imagine having to search for all the orders of a given person. That would be very hard to do if they aren't sorted and most likely with physical storage, they won't be. Using databases solves this problem too. With a simple data query, you can retrieve all the orders of a given person and databases retrieve and filter data very fast. Moreover, you can find many people with the same name. In the database, every entity has its ID, unique identifier, which helps the DBMS distinguish entities which are customers in this case. The database engine guarantees that unique identifiers could not be duplicated. Databases can restrict data to follow a certain format. For example, orders may be required to have a mandatory date and the order dates shouldn't be an arbitrary text. For example, it should be a date plus time in certain format. The record of physical receipt will most likely be kept in drawers. They are easy to access, which is a security breach. Databases easily solve this by allowing developers to assign different permissions for the users. Some users can have only read writes. Others may have the rights to do all the CRUD operations. Some users can even have more restricted access, for example, only to view orders and change their status. 
probably one customer will be buying from the store many times. And every time you have to print their data on receipts. In this case, you will want to avoid data redundancy. You don't want to keep the customer address in the database many times, but only once. This problem is solved in database systems through keeping data about a certain entity only once and referencing the entity by its ID from the other entities. In our example, customers and orders can be stored in separate collections with one-to-many relationship between them. Each order will keep a customer ID number instead of duplicating the entire data about the customer. Customers will be stored separately and each customer can be referenced by their unique ID. This is the basic concept of databases. They allow for easily maintainable and secure data storage. There is, of course, a lot more to learn, which is why we take a closer look at databases and solve many practical problems in the database courses at SoftUni. Mm -hmm.